Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today we're taking a look at the much anticipated Dell Inspiron 7567. This is the successor to the very popular Inspiron 7559 that many of you guys love. This model features an all new design. You also get the latest Intel chips as well as the all new Nvidia Pascal GPUs. Let's go ahead and break down the specs. You're getting a quad core i5 7300HQ, which is a KB like processor, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, Nvidia GTX 1050. You can also custom configure it with a GTX 1050 Ti. 15 inch full HD panel, one terabyte hard drive running at 5400 RPM, and the retail price of the base model is $799. The new 7567 still keeps it very simple to upgrade. Simply remove the one Phillips screw and boom, you have access to the internals. Here you got your 74 watt hour battery pack, traditional hard drive, an N.2 slot for your SSD upgrade, and your two DIMM slots for your RAM. Here are the speeds for the 128 gigabyte SSD model. The read speeds are fairly good. However, the write speeds are kind of slow. If you upgrade to the 256 or even 512, you'll get much better performance. And last but not least, here are the speeds for the painfully slow 1TB hard drive running at 5400 RPM. The front of the laptop looks pretty cool, kinda looks like a Spider-Man theme going on. Be careful on these side edges right here as it is pretty sharp. This laptop is mainly made out of plastic and here's a quick view of the interior. The speakers are now gone from the top section of the keyboard, now pushed to the front. Now let's take a look at the top section of the laptop. This section has like a soft touch rubber feeling that feels very nice. This year's model, the vents towards the back look more aggressive. Also keep in mind the side vent on the old Inspiron is now gone. Let's take a look at the ports here on the right side of the laptop. You got your headset microphone jack combo, two USB 3s, full size HDMI, and your RJ45 Ethernet. On the left side you got your security lock slot, charging port, USB 3, and an SD card reader. There's very minimal display flex on this laptop, however towards the middle section of the laptop when it's closed, it does tend to go in a little bit more. In terms of keyboard flex, there's hardly any. I mean I can try to squeeze down very hard right here, however it will barely budge. Overall Dell did an excellent job with the Inspiron 7567. Another big change in this year's model is the hinge. This hinge is kind of like the Y50 or the Y700 if you recall, compared to last year's model which had the double hinge. It feels pretty solid so far, however time will tell. One of my biggest disappointments so far is the TN panel. Dell decided to use all TN panels besides the 4K which uses an IPS panel. Even though this is a TN panel, the side to side viewing angles weren't too bad. My biggest gripe was the vertical viewing angles. It was just awful. Last year's model had a full HD IPS panel, it was actually pretty good. Yes, the color saturation wouldn't win any awards, however it was much higher than this year's model. This year's model you get 60% of sRGB coverage compared to last year's model which gave you 71%. And for the Adobe RGB, you get 45% for this year's model compared to last year's model which gave you 51%. Overall, yes, this panel is a downgrade. The trackpad feels identical to last year's model, however the performance feels a little bit better. Tracking, two finger scrolling is pretty smooth, however, multi-touch did give me a couple of issues out of the box. Let me try to scroll right here and show you a demo. See how the multi-touch lagged right now, see that? Hopefully Dell can issue a software update to fix this issue. You get a standard full size keyboard with a 10 key numeric keypad. This year's model you got the WASD keys highlighted in red to make it more like a gamer's laptop. The key travel is kind of short, however the tactile feedback from these keys offer a very good typing experience. You also get a backlit keyboard, there's two options, medium and high. Also this year's keyboard is red instead of white. The speakers are now in the front of the laptop and they actually sound pretty good. Dell has tweaked them and the sound quality is actually pretty decent compared to last year's model. There's also a mini sub on the bottom, however the performance from it is still pretty weak. This laptop does have an HD webcam and this is how it looks. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. These new Inspirons are rocking the latest Intel Core i5 KB Lake processors. You can also upgrade to the Core i7 for better performance. Here's some Geekbench 3 performance scores. This one's the Core i5 version and this one's the Core i7. As you can see the multi-core on the i7 is about 3000 points higher. This year's biggest news is obviously the Pascal GPUs. The new 7567 features the latest NVIDIA GTX 1050 and GTX 1050 Ti for better performance. The biggest differences are the shader count and the higher clock speeds. The 1050 features 640 shaders, 1050 Ti comes in at 768 shaders, and for reference the 1060 comes in at 1280 shaders. Overall the new 1050 and 1050 Ti offer a decent leap over its predecessors. For example, the 1050 is comparable to about, I would say, a 965M, and the 1050 Ti is probably comparable to a 970M. With that being said, you can expect to play many of today's high-end games on high and ultra settings depending on the certain title. Now let's test out the GTX 1050 Ti while playing Overwatch at 1920 by 1080p on epic settings. So far I'm getting an average around 60 to 65 frames per second. 
which is pretty amazing for the GTX 1050 Ti. And here's the test with the GTX 1050 running at the same resolution, however I had to turn the settings down from Epic to Ultra. So far it's getting pretty similar results. I was going to test out Battlefield 1, however the Nvidia drivers weren't compatible, but I did get to test out Battlefield 4, so let's take a look. Here's a quick test of Battlefield 4 running at 1920 by 1080p on Ultra settings. So far I'm getting an average of around 65 to 70 frames per second, which is pretty spectacular. Just for comparison, last year's model with the 960M, I got around 45 to 55 frames per second on high settings, so you can see the big difference here. Now let's compare it to his baby brother, the GTX 1050, again this is at 1080p on ultra settings, and so far I'm still getting an impressive frame rate, I'm getting around 55 to 60 frames per second. So what do you guys think of the new entry level Pascal based GPUs? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Here's a screenshot of the Battlefield 4 settings I used while testing out both GPUs. And here go the GPU temperatures for the GTX 1050 Ti. I got an average around 73 degrees Celsius after about an hour of gameplay. And compared to the GTX 1050, which ran a little bit cooler, I averaged around 64 to 68 degrees Celsius. Here are the external temperatures after playing about an hour of Overwatch on the GTX 1050 Ti model. At the center you're getting around 45 to 47 degrees Celsius, the top is going to be the hottest at around 48 degrees Celsius. Now let's compare it to the GTX 1050 model, again this is after an hour of gameplay on Overwatch. It is running a little bit cooler, about 5 degrees cooler. The fan noise is actually pretty decent. You're getting an average around 48 to 50 decibels, which is about average on gaming laptops at full throttle. The new Inspiron features the same 74 watt hour battery pack and I'm getting around I would say 5 to 6 hours of regular usage and about an hour and 45 minutes of gameplay. So let's get to the conclusion of the new Inspiron 7567. These new models feature the latest entry level Pascal GPUs that offer some pretty good solid performance. The new design looks much better and the speakers offer better sound quality. However, my biggest gripe is why in the world would Dell remove a good IPS panel found on last year's model? I probably got the answer. The Inspiron 7559 was probably stealing too much sales from the Alienware line of laptops. Dell has also dropped the price of the Alienware 13 in order to attract more customers to better hardware like GTX 1060 and better quality IPS panels and even OLED panels. If the new 7567 does not sell too well, hopefully Dell will offer a built to order option like a $50 upgrade for an IPS panel. Don't get me wrong, the new 7567 is a great solid laptop, however the lackluster screen is really holding it back from my recommendation. Alright guys, this is the end of the review, if you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys next time.